Yellow Nebraska hat. I'm starting to trend. Questions for Coach? Coach, just how important is the depth that you guys have coming into this year and what this room can achieve versus maybe where you were last year? Uh, super excited about the depth. I think that's what's going to make it so much more fun in the season is because, uh, you know, I, I think our – our depth chart could change week to week based on how you practice and how you play in the game. And guys are going to be competing for catches at a really, really high level. Hey, what, have, uh, what have you seen out of Jameer and Bonner so far? He's, he's moved around a little bit, but he seems to be a big part of the offense. Um, yes, uh, you could kind of tell my, my face lit up a little bit talking about him. Um, he plays football the way we like to be. Uh, like to play it. You know, he's super physical on the perimeter, uh, strikes and dominates contact at a super high level. You know, he's got really, really big hands, so he can catch the ball over the middle. Um, fearless type of guy, so he wants to stick his nose in there, and um, he's an unbelievable teammate. He'll do whatever it takes to win. I know you're excited about getting Malachi back and just his physical presence on the perimeter. What have you seen out of him and just, you know, you're, you're blocking the blocking piece of it for you guys. Right. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's such a, a big physical presence. I think he's like uh, came in today at over 200 pounds, you know. Um, uh, still want him to trend in the right direction and gain weight and get back to some uh, uh, heavier playing weight. But, um, you know, he, he's doing a really good job. Um, and you see his kind of physicality transitioning. Um, into his route running, which I think is super impressive. You know, you're talking about a big guy. You can win at the top of the route being physical. Um, so that's been really, really exciting with him. Hey, Garrett, how do you feel about having Carter Nelson in your room? Oh, he's awesome. Uh, you know, he, coming from eight-man football, um, uh, small town, you know, I, I think – I've been most impressed with just how he fits into the room, you know, his personality, his competitiveness, you know, in the recruiting process, we got to watch him play a few times, got to watch him play basketball. Um, and I didn't really realize, you know, how explosive of an athlete he really is, right? Obviously you see him pole vaulting 19 feet and all that crazy stuff, but um, man, he, he's an explosive athlete. Um, he's dominant on the perimeter, a lot like Janeerin, um when it comes to blocking, um, but he's a competitor. You know, he, he wants to compete. What was your challenge or your challenge to Sidney Corey this, this camp after a really successful spring game? Um, you know, I, I think his biggest challenge is make the routine plays routinely. You know, because you'll see him, he flashes, he pops. You know, he's special with the football in his hands. But, but also, you know, I just want to see him run a snap route, get his depth, throw the guy by at the top of the route and go win on third down. Um, I want to see him, you know, when we're, when we're running an Occupy route, you know, and we don't have a ton of those, but um, I want to see him get his depth, get the guy open, you know, uh, kind of one of those PTF type routes. So I think that's his big thing, and he's trending in the di right direction. When you guys moved Carter Nelson to receiver, like whose idea was that? And, and has it been much of a transition for you at all to bring him in there? Um, not, not much of a transition. That was Coach Rule and Coach Sat. Um, you know, I, I think it was just, you know, what's the best way to get him on the field the fastest um, and, and learning our offense and, you know, playing uh, the position he's playing. He, he can almost get cross-trained a little bit, um, you know, playing both uh, in the slot, outside, and, you know, in line at tight end. You know, so, he you know, Year one, it's going to be a lot of uh, jack of all trade type plays for him. I'm sure you know when you guys brought in um, Banks Naylor, everybody else in the room had to know you were bringing them in for a reason, right? They're seniors. Mm -hmm. How have you seen some of those players adjust to the fact that these two guys are good? They're probably going to play a lot, and as a result, some guys have to step their game up. Uh, I think it's been awesome. You know, I've, those guys haven't shot away. You know, you talk about Jalen Lloyd, who. Uh, in the last six games, have three TDs of over 50 plus touchdowns, um, and, and then you know Malachi has the big catch uh, versus Northwestern that helps us win that ball game. But both of those guys, all they've done is just rise to the occasion um, and competed with the best of them. You know, I think that's the whole room is just there's a standard uh, that's that's being raised every single day, um, and Isaiah and Jamal are kind of leading that charge, both from a, a physical standpoint but also a mental standpoint. You like uh, Keelan Smith's going to fit in? Oh, you know, he's he's done an unbelievable job, you know, in the weight room with Corey and nutrition with Miss Kristen. You know, he's about 210 pounds right now, so he's a big physical player. Um, you know, he's smooth, savvy football player. He's got unbelievable ball skills, catches it in front of his eyes. Um, and, you know, he, he's just another one of those guys, kind of like Ja'Cory, um, of that, that freshman football, you know, uh, 18 years old playing in front of 93,000, it's a lot on a guy, but um, we just want you to go in there, do your job, make the routine plays routinely. 
Jared, is this a totally different camp experience for you this year? I mean, last year with the youth and experience you had in your room and how uh, just the experience you do that? Uh, it, a little bit, a little bit. Um, you know, we're still in Selick, so that's the – that's the constant. The boys are having fun with that. Um, you know, I, I saw them play cards the other day. That was kind of cool, you know, seeing that camaraderie. Um, it is. It's a totally different room, um, you know, both from a confidence standpoint. And I think that came a lot from uh, some experience that got brought into the room, experience from last year. And then also just what Coach – I can't say it enough, Coach Campbell and Miss Kristen and what they've done, you know, just – you look at them, their bodies are changing. You know, Jalen Lloyd's at 179 right now. Um, last year he played probably 10 pounds lighter than that. So I, that, that's huge confidence when you look in the mirror and you see a bigger man. It's been almost a year since IGC got hurt. And just how have you seen him bounce back after such a long time away from the ball? Uh, probably one of the uh, – proudest moments as a coach you know that's a that's a lonely deal um you know you talk about getting hurt august 31st first game of the year um and you know you got to go a whole year waking up at 6 a.m uh doing rehab you never know if you're going to get back it, you're already talking about a guy who's been through um some previous trials in his career um and then now he's weighing it 198 pounds he can bench press 225 22 times he's a 500 pound squatter um, you know, so he's put in the work. You can see it. You know, he, he made some plays um, two nights ago that were really, really freaking impressive. Um, and I'm, I'm really proud of him. Hey, Garrett, with Carter, how do you structure things? You know, you mentioned the transition from eight-man ball. How do you structure it so that, you know, he's in a position to be able to do what you want him to do this year and, and you know, also not miss out on, like, the, 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 the education that he needs to be able to ultimately be the player you want in the end. Right, yes, sir. You know, um, he's kind of, why you recruit a guy like that is because of how athletic and how big he is. So I don't want to out-coach that out of him. If, if that makes sense at all. Um, so really right now we're focused on alignment assignment and then let your talent take over. Because um, once he gets lined up, he knows what he's doing. He's a special football player. Here, Glenn Thomas mentioned that he saw someone you would as a guy, quarterback. Do you see some of yourself in him too, or what's it the point? Oh, shoot, he's a way better football player than me. Jalen football is what we call him in the office right now. Um, no, he, he's got a great, uh, you know, confidence about him, moxie. You can see him um, already kind of running the huddle. He's got leadership qualities, obviously, being a quarterback for so long. Um, he, he's been impressive in camp. Can you tell he's a guy who wants to be a coach someday, too? Yes, absolutely. You know, he was actually um, – it's crazy. I, I had no idea that this was actually him, but he came to our coaches clinic. Um, and he sat in every coach's um, meeting. And then after, he pulled a few of us aside and just asked, uh, you know, questions about how to get in the profession, you know, what, what's the concept type questions. And then next thing you know, he's at our post-grad camp. And I was like, wait, aren't you? So it's pretty cool. As you like offense, uh, how do you feel like the offense is ball year two from year one? I, I'm very fired up for where we're at right now. I really, really am. Um, I think we're playing to our players' strengths, not asking them to do things that um, they aren't capable of. I think we're putting um, the right guys in the right positions, and uh, we're going to put the best 11 out there on the field, and we're going to put the winners on the field. Can that best 11 be pretty versatile? In other words, like there's going to be circumstances where you really have about 17 guys, but you can kind of move them into different parts. Mm -hmm. I think that's what uh, Coach Sat does at such a high level. You know, you look back at uh, South Carolina – you know, a guy that I always like to bring up is Jaheim Bell, who just got drafted uh, in the seventh round by New England. Um, he was playing tight end. He played number one. He played in the backfield. He was pass protecting on third downs. And, shoot, he was carrying it on first and second downs. And he's really a tight end type body. But that's just Coach Sat being creative and, and getting guys the football. Coach, you were in the locker room at Baylor when Coach Rule was there and that transformation happened between year one and year two. What is it about him that allows for that, that the stops he's made? And do you see a similar fabric here? Mm -hmm. The work, the work, and, and then just the the toughness, right? Like uh, Coach Rule is a, a really, really tough person, and, and that kind of aura uh, gets spread throughout the whole facility. Um, you know, a couple guys have said it, but when you walk in here, it's fourth and one every day. Um, and, and that type of mentality, I think, drives us. Um, and the people that like that are the people that are kind of uh, always been around those OOU type guys. You see the players rise to the top that, you know, have that fourth and one type mindset. Thank you, Mr. All righty. Thank you all. You all have a great day.